John, Paul here at the Rojovi Music Workshop. Okay, in this video we're going to uh, take a closer look at some of my specialist luthiery tools which I use for building, repairing, fixing, renovating musical instruments. Okay, so let's make a start. So let's start with uh, this rack, uh, which actually I made yesterday, knocked it up in about an hour. Uh, because I did have most of these tools stored in little toolboxes so it just wasn't that easy to get hold of them okay so starting from this end uh, this is um, a reamer a whole reamer um, so for those of you who don't know what one of these is it's basically to make holes in wood bigger but you can see obviously that it that it's tapered so when you uh, put this into a hole and turn it, uh, it makes the hole bigger, but it also makes it tapered. So this is its specific use is for uh, bridge pin holes and tuning peg holes. Um, and uh, th just the other day, I put, I put a handle on it as well, because what it did have was a small metal bar uh, that went through this hole about this long and about five mil thick and it just it just wasn't very comfortable to use and also because it's quite top uh, close to the top of the flutes here uh, it wasn't easy to get this far into a hole so I've made a new handle out of a piece of dowel uh, drilled a hole in it um, put a eight mil socket I think it's eight mil eight mil or six mil socket in there glued it in uh, and then Put this into the socket and glued that in, super glue, and then painted it black. So that's much easier to use now. And because uh, you don't put a great deal of force on these um, when you're using them, so uh, that handle is plenty strong enough. Okay, so there's that. Now here uh, I've got, let's move that a bit closer. Uh, these uh, are small needle files. Now I've got 20 of these, all different styles. Uh, so this one, for example, is a round file, and you can see it goes to a point at the tip. Uh, let's see, we've got uh, this one, which is a flat file, two-sided flat file, and straight-edged. Okay, and this one is very similar. So you you still got two flat edges, but this one goes tapers to a point. Um, this one, uh, sorry, no, not that one. <laughs> this one. Is it? No. Where is it? No. <laughs> I found it. Okay, now this one is a three sided triangular uh, file. So again, you've got flat sides. And I've also got one of these that's square. So I've got lots of different uh, types of these files, um, and th these are quite these are quite rough cut ones. Uh, so these are more like uh, miniature rasps, really, than files. Uh, these ones with the black handles, the these are files. Um, so these are a bit finer. Uh, so this one is is a four sided square one, and I've got triangle, flat, round, set, same as these ones. So these are for doing quite small detailed uh, filing work um, on, on instruments for, for wood and also for um, the nuts and the saddles and, and things like that for, for shaping. So, I mean, there's a million and one uses for these things. Okay, so moving along to the next part, we've got very small screwdrivers. Uh, I've got Phillips screwdrivers and flat screwdrivers. Uh, I've got four in this set and um, another four in this set. They're the same thing really. These, these ones actually are slightly bigger than those orange ones. So I've got some fine uh, screwdrivers. Um, and here at the back we've got larger screwdrivers, Phillips and flat, and also my little dumpy ones. And um, I also have three more Phillips screwdrivers here which are a little bit smaller so these are for attaching um, 
tuners and, and things like that and and adjustments on, on um, uh, bridges and things for electric guitars so again many many uses um, and then I've got a screwdriver set here which has got uh, these these attachments also got an extension um, now I use these quite a lot for uh, for the tuner screws and, and the very very small screws on, on instruments again many many different uses uh, and then here at the front uh, these are small uh, hand carving chisels I don't use these very much because um, they're not all that good they're quite cheap um, but they're okay for, for some of the smaller detailed work I've got another set of these coming a bit bigger but um, hand carving chisels uh, and then here at the bottom I've got my uh, various size bigger chisels and I've got my little ruler there so that's those that I keep on the rack so I, keep, I, keep, I made this rack to keep these tools in here so that they're just easier to, to get hold of and that just stays at the back of my bench there um, right so moving on to this box which is where I did have most of those well, probably half of those tools in here as well um, so let's see what have we got in here uh, okay so um, let's see let's start with these so these are uh, truss rod adjusting keys so I've got two there I've got one for one for a Gibson, one for a Taylor. Now I'm, I'm not really using these at all because uh, here in Thailand people don't tend to have this brand of guitar, they have the cheapy ones. Um, but these are for adjusting the truss rods. And I've got other ones as well. Uh, this one you can use for some of them, but this is actually a, um, a tensioning key for the, the tension hooks on a banjo. Um, doesn't fit all of them so I've got various ones like this for adjusting uh, truss rods some of them will use an allen key um, actually most of them do to be honest um, what else have we got in here so these are fine files all different gauges these are for nut slots and, and uh, bridge saddle slots that kind of thing um, and here is uh, a bridge pin puller so you hook this underneath the bridge pins to, to lever it out so, it's, so this one's all metal um, that's a really good tool so I've got lots of uh, allen keys and things like that in there um, and I've got these couple of string winders I use these occasionally um, this one is just a winder this one is the winder this is a multi-tool, it's also got cutters on the end there for cutting the strings and this one also has a bridge pin puller on the end but because it's plastic uh, it tends to flex and it's not that good that's why I have that metal one okay now this uh, this is a I'm gonna have to put my glasses on for this one this is a multi-use uh, tool uh, so you can see it's got measurements on there um, if you look along here uh, you can see the measurements go up so this is the uh, thousandths of an inch side so it, go, it starts at ten thousandths and goes all the way up to a hundred and forty thousandths and then if you flip it over you've got the same thing but in metric uh, and you've got various ones here as well now the, the main use for these along the edge is to measure the string action the string height above the frets um, but you can also use it as a fret rocker so you put it across your frets to see if there, any of them are high or low because uh, you want to make sure all of your frets are the same level but it's got a few more uses as well that thing um, needle nose pliers um, various uses now when I'm doing fret jobs um, on a on any instrument I need cleaning brushes as well so I've got various cleaning brushes <coughs> for the job and okay this actually let's start with let's go with that and that, that and that because
is um, that one. Where is it? Ah, there it is. So these four tools here um, are kind of for the same job. These are for uh, fret leveling. So this this one, for example, is just an ordinary metal file which I've uh, taken the handle off and, and cut the, the spike at the end off and I've arrow dieted it to a piece of wood. Now this is for leveling frets. Uh, also I've uh, beveled each end to make it smooth. So with your fretboard you run this along the frets um, to level all the frets up. Okay, so that's just an ordinary metal file there. Now this is kind of the same thing, but this this has uh, four different grey different grits of sandpaper on it. I think it, hold on, it starts at uh, four hundred, and then we've got one thousand. That's 400, 600, 1000, and 1200. So this, this does the same job as this. Well, this does the, the leveling, the filing, and this just uh, cleans up the, the frets afterwards. Now, once you've done that, obviously the tops of the frets are going to be flat and you want them to be curved. So that's what this tool is for. You're not really going to see this, but there are three different uh, channels in here, different sizes, and, the, and there's a file inside there. So you use these to go over the top of the frets to recrown them. It's called a recrowning file to, to give that curve again on the top. And then at the edge of the frets, you'll go over the ends there to uh, tidy up the edges. And then when it comes to the edges of the frets, you want those to be smooth as well. So that's where this tool comes in. Um, so you can see it's just a block of wood and it's got a file located in here at 45 degrees. So you'll run this along the, the edge of your fretboard. Um, so it files off the edges of the frets, gives them a bevel. So these all, four, all these four tools combined are for doing fret jobs. Um, to, to level the frets and then to recrown them and to smooth them and to make sure the edges are not sharp. And um, with these, these, these are sanding blocks and these, you can do one fret at a time, but why would you? <laughs> so you put this over the fret so that this part protects the fret board and then you can... But don't use these very often. Use the other four tools. Uh, okay, now these are um, just an ordinary pair of end cutters, but I've filed the flat, the, the end flat and smooth, because normally you have a V groove down there. So I use these for removing frets. So I need it flush there so I can get underneath the fret to remove it. And uh, these are nut slot files. So I've got three of these. Okay, see they've got numbers on them. So each side of each one is a different size. So you've got six different sizes. So these are for filing the grooves in a nut and in some cases in the saddle as well. Uh, and I've got another one here, a bigger one, uh, which is thicker, which this one I don't use very often. Uh, so this would be for, for thicker strings. It's only got two, two sizes as well. Uh, and then we've got um, fret wire. So when I'm adding new frets to a new instrument or replacing frets on, on an older instrument, it means new fret wire. And I also use these to, to cut the ends off. And I use this proper fret hammer to hammer the frets into the, the fretboard. So it's a plastic hammer, but it's weighted, and it's also got a brass tip this side. So uh, frets are not normally steel. Sometimes they are, but normally they're a softer metal like nickel. So you wouldn't use an ordinary hammer. You have to use one that's not going to damage them. Uh, now, if I'm making a new instrument, I need to cut the fret slots before I can put the fret wires in. So uh, fret saw, so it's a very fine a uh, very thin blade and very fine teeth. You're not going to see that, 
but it's probably I don't know at least 25 TPI teeth per inch and um, then there's this gizmo so I bought this in a kit so you just slot these in either side <laughs> never works on the camera does it so you flop, slot these in both sides uh, and then you've got um, a frame for cutting your fret slot so you put this is obviously no good for tapered uh, tapered edge fretboards this is for straight fretboards so you put your fretboard in here and then you've got slots here um, so you put the saw in here and then you can cut your fret slots okay uh, let's see what else have we got various polishes and, and cleaners lots of those I've got two of those uh, now this tool is just a, a, a paint scraper or palette knife and um, I have um, smoothed each side so I've actually thinned it so it's very very thin at the end but not sharp and I've rounded the edges off as well this tool I use for removing bridges if, to, if I need to replace the bridge um, so I heat it up and then slide it underneath the bridge to soften the glue and lift it off also for removing fretboards okay so the last one in this box is this um, Insize is the brand and what this is is a tapered gauge okay so can you see that it's tapered so it starts at this is a metric one it starts at uh, one millimeter and goes all the way up to 10 milli millimeters a tapered gauge now this is another tool you can use for checking the height of strings so if you're this is your string this is your fretboard you slide this underneath until the string just touches this and it will tell you the the height of your string so that's another gauge for measuring uh, string height okay so that is push those aside that's all of the all of the tools in there uh, this is um, this is a 21 inch uh, fret scale gauge for marking and making new um, fretboards so as I said this is for a 21 inch scale I've got quite a few of these this is actually the, one of the smaller ones um, and I, I've been using this for making some of my dulcimers as well um, so I've got a few more in there as well okay now in this box here uh, this is more for accessories there are a few other tools as well uh, so in, in this one here I've got uh, nuts and saddles most of these are, have been are used ones but i never throw them away they're always useful and i'm always using these to make new ones for frets and for saddles um, most most of those are plastic but i've got some bone ones as well and uh, wood um, let's see what have we got here uh, nothing interesting there a few picks these are actually banjo picks uh, and in the bottom here I've got spare bridges, new bridges for guitars and ukuleles and um, a couple of bridge templates for when I'm making or replacing new ones. <coughs> I've also got strings in there and um, a few other bits and pieces. Uh, but these, these two as well, these are not accessories, these are tools. So when I'm replacing a bridge or putting on a new bridge for a guitar, these are the clamps. Where, when you glue the new bridge on, these are the clamps to hold it in place. So with the screws here, they go through uh, the, 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 the bridge pin holes in the bridge and through the guitar itself or whichever instrument it is. And you use these to clamp it down. Now I've got two different sorts, as you can see. So if you see this top one is a bit wider and the both edges are straight and looking at them this way uh, it's more flat. So this one is for a regular uh, type guitar 
steel strung guitar. This one is for classical guitar, which tend to have uh, the, the bridge is normally like this size and shape, and they tend to be flat as well. <coughs> different setup to steel strung guitars because they use nylon strings, so they use a different type of bridge. Okay, so that's most of uh, the regular luthery tools that I use. And um, it's not all of them, but it's quite a few of them that I use regularly. Um, and I've, I've built up this collection over quite a long time, actually. And um, it's, I, I do use most of these tools frequently when, when I'm working on the instruments, um, as well as just regular tools as well. But, the, but some, a lot of these tools and, and accessories and bits and pieces are specifically for <coughs> instrument uh, building and repairing. Okay, well, I really hope you enjoyed this video, watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it and showing you my tools and bits and pieces. Uh, if you did, please uh, like, uh, comment, share, and if you haven't already, what would be really, really nice is if you could subscribe to my channel. In the meantime, everybody, take care, be safe, peace out.